Welcome to this video which uh, walks you through the Ferminal which I have uh, taken the name Fake Terminal as in a terminal window uh, on a Linux machine or on your Windows and uh, created a fake one. So inside here is a small OLED screen and this is an old fashioned uh, slide projector um, and you may have already seen this because I created a video machine out of it or a, a retro video player. Um, I've always wanted to create a version um, that basically worked as a small computer. So inside here you've got the Raspberry Pi and then this is the uh, Argus viewer. It's a button on the top which plays the videos and you can check this out in the other video. Um, and then I've just written some Python code to respond to keyboard shortcuts, sorry keyboard um, letters and then uh, they display on the screen. So for example I can write something like welcome to the real world. Now part of the process was actually working out how many letters I could have on a single line and I think I can get 20 And then the second part was actually identifying the spacebar being pressed because the spacebar isn't a letter um, and it's actually an absence of a letter. So I needed to write in some code to uh, recognize the spacebar. So you can hear me probably pressing the spacebar there and um, it, it moves. So yeah, it's a fake terminal. You can write uh, whatever you want, just randomly here, and then once it gets to the end of the line, it moves to the next one. Uh, let's show you the code because that's quite interesting. It's also available on GitHub if you want to try it out yourself and um, build your own, or should I say, improve my version of the program code. So here's a quick rundown of the code. Um, you'll need to install these libraries here which allow you to control and interact with the um, OLED screen. Um, this part here sets up the sizes for the OLED screen which is kind of pretty standard for the, uh, the library. Um, then we've got some global variables and each of these line 1, 2, 3, 4 through to 7 are responsible for holding the characters that appear on each of the lines and then I've set up um, lists for each of the lines. So line one is empty. And the idea is as you press the uh, keyboard, press a letter, then the list is populated. And when it gets to a certain length, 20 characters, it then pops down into list two and starts populating that, creating the impression that uh, you're writing over a number of different lines. So this is the main function that controls the key. So I press the key so first of all it checks the length of the uh, length sorry the length of the line and then if the line is less than 20 then it continues to fill in the characters if it's over 20 then it jumps up to the next line you can see here I've got line 1 uh, obviously 0 and then line 2 3 4 all the way up to 7 and each time it's checking them and then we write to the line is the uh, data or the coordinates for the line. So this is 00, zero which is in the top. Then we've got zero 09 which is about there, zero 018, zero 027, zero 036 and that writes along those lines. Now the spacebar was quite tricky because um, as I think I said before the spacebar doesn't actually create a letter and um, basically let's do a bit of a hack with this where check to see if the spacebar button had been pressed and if it had then write that back into the, um, the letters, um, the, the list of letters. So this whole section here is responsible for the spacebar and what it's doing is checking if a letter is pressed and if a letter is pressed then it gets written back into letters and then line one gets added to line, line one or line two depending on which line you're writing on and if it's not a letter then you must have pressed the spacebar and then it gets written back to um, the same lines or the same um, the, the same list which is then written into a line 
um, and then if you release it basically press escape then uh, ends the program and it's as simple as that um, don't forget it's on github if you want to try it out and um, yeah if you can improve the code let me know because I'm always up for making a better more efficient version